Today we're going over seven shortcuts or mistakes that may have occurred when installing a gas furnace at a residence or a commercial building, and these lead to high electrical energy costs and reduced efficiency. And so we wanna make sure to not do any of these seven mistakes. Mistake number one could be that a natural gas to propane conversion kit was not installed properly. And so maybe the spring was not replaced and the gas valve, or maybe the gas pressure was not adjusted properly at the spring, or maybe the orifices were not installed, maybe the wrong size was installed. And so you could have other problems where you have maybe an air limiting device was not installed as it should have been. And maybe a combustion analysis was not performed while adjusting the gas pressure at the gas valve. So I got to tell you that I've run up on gas furnaces that have a lot of soot in the combustion chamber because it was never set up properly. And so that really messes up the entire heat exchanger and even clogs that up. I mean, it's a big deal. So make sure to set up the natural gas to propane conversion kits properly. Mistake number two, which is really a shortcut, is only installing one pipe for the exhaust on a gas furnace instead of one pipe for the exhaust and one for the combustion air. So you got to remember that if you, you don't install the second pipe, the one for the combustion air, the furnace is going to steal air from within the building. It's going to provide a negative pressurization for the building. And in order for the air to come back into the building, every time you open a door, it's going to suck the air right in. You're going to suck the air in through any crevices in the doors and the windows. It will be the same thing as sticking a shot back right at the corner of a bottom door where you see sunlight coming out at and you're sucking that cold air into the house or into the building while you're trying to heat it. So that's what's occurring if you have the gas furnace, say, in your basement or within the building structure. I mean, if it's in the attic, there's going to be an air exchange that's happening in the attic, but that's not as bad as within the building. I always install that second pipe, and you can still put one hole out of the building with what's called a concentric kit, and it's a nice clean look when you exit the building. Number three, which is really a, a huge shortcut, is never inspecting the ductwork before replacing a gas furnace. That's a huge deal. And that's because your ductwork could be leaking. It could have I've seen where it is completely open in the attic and you're sucking your return air from the attic with all the insulation and the low temperature air, sucking that right into your new gas furnace because it was never inspected. You could have that occurring. You could have maybe a just a low insulation value. It's just it's just wasting all of your all of your heat that you're paying for your gas furnace to provide. You could also have maybe the ductwork is too small to support the system. After that furnace is installed, in order to just double check to make sure that your ductwork is properly sized, there's not any issues, you can check your total external static pressure across the furnace from the return to the supply and make sure it's within the manufacturer's ratings. Shortcut number four is if the setup switches inside the gas furnace were never set up and then also the setup within the thermostat was never done properly. So if you have a, uh, a fancy thermostat, uh, and even if it's a baseline thermostat, you're gonna have to enter the setup mode and, and select which type of system that you have. And so likewise, inside the gas furnace, high efficiency gas furnaces have setup switches so that you can choose between, uh, say, electrical efficiency or comfort. You know, you can set all that stuff up for your, your best possible solution in the new gas furnace. Shortcut number five is that maybe a combustion analysis was never done on the gas furnace to make sure that everything was set up properly to begin with. Maybe you're burning too much fuel uh, compared to what you should be uh, for the building. Mistake or shortcut number six is that maybe the furnace being installed is too small or it's too large. And I've been in that instance as a installation technician where I was told to install a furnace that I knew was too small for the building. And you gotta make sure to do a heat load and loss calculation before recommending a certain size furnace for the building structure. It's gotta be done uh, because if the furnace is undersized in the middle of winter when it's real low in temperature, it's not gonna be able to heat up and, and catch up uh, to the heat loss of the building. The other thing is if it's oversized, you could have parts breaking due to expansion contraction and that system turning on and off so, so rapidly and so often. You want a decently long runtime and you don't want that system to turn on and off continually. And so there's gotta be a happy medium and so you need to do a heat load and loss calculation for that. Shortcut number seven is that maybe the thermostat was installed in the improper location 
And so you want to install that near the, the middle of the building on a central wall near the returns and away from any exterior doors or windows that may affect the temperature being read at the thermostat. You could also have the air opening at the back of the thermostat, maybe reading air from up in the attic through the wall or, or through into the crawl space, and that's negatively affecting the temperature read at the thermostat, causing that thermostat to turn on and off too often or too little. If that thermostat's on that central wall where it's supposed to be, make sure to just put a little bit of silicone or a thumb gum in the hole and make sure to seal at the top and the bottom of the plate wherever that thermostat wire is going to just make sure you're getting an accurate temperature. If you want to learn more about thermostats and troubleshooting and wiring, make sure to check out some of the other videos I have linked down in the description section below. I also have 10 wiring diagrams over to the website at acservicetech.com slash resources. Also make sure to check out our refrigerant charting and service procedures for air conditioning book, our thousand question workbook and quick reference cards, which all can be used out in the field by service technicians and also in the classroom. And so that's all over at our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. And also make sure to check out and subscribe to our friend Gary McCready's YouTube channel, HVAC Know-It-All. And he's got a bunch of videos over there, such as order of operations for troubleshooting, pressure switch settings, walking box defrost, and much more. So I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.